Hello everyone, Robert Saunders here again today, and I want to show something brand new here. We've actually taken all of our Apex Navigator multi-cloud offers, and we've moved it over to Apex AI Ops. Now this is very cool. It runs great. It's the exact same functionality. So if, you, if you've landed here through Dell Technologies YouTube chan channel and the Apex playlist, all the videos that you see here that I've done still apply, but I wanted to make this video that shows everything new and how to find it inside of Apex AI Ops. So yes, all the use cases still apply here, sub millisecond performance for block, multi-AZ resilience, and all of the enterprise data services for block and file that you expect on-premises, you also get them in the cloud. So let's go ahead and see all everything new that we have here. So here we are. I'm browsing to apex-aiops.dell.com. And I did have SSO set up previously, so I'm going to continue to use that. That's now an option. That was a requirement previously. It's now an option. So my SSO is actually set up inside of Microsoft Entra. That's going to all pass through seamlessly. I've already had that done. And now, here I am, right here at the jump off point for Apex AI Ops. This is the home screen here, and I'm going to show you where we go uh, after we look at the infrastructure. I have actually one of my PowerFlex on premises labs surface through AI Ops. More on that in a second, but not why we're here. We're here to see where the Apex Navigator multi cloud functionality now lands inside of Apex AI Ops. So I'll go here to Manage multi-cloud storage over on the left there. And now I'm here at the exact same kind of framing that we had previously in Dell Premier. Now all of this functionality is here inside of Apex AI Ops Observability. Cloud deployments, jobs, docs, licenses, the data mobility, and the cloud access. Everything I've done all these videos on is now here. So it all still applies just maybe a different portal, which it actually is. So let's drill into this and see how it all works again. So I'll go to Cloud Deployments, and then I'm going to click on Deploy System. This should be very uh, similar for everybody who's been through my other videos here already. And again, four-step process to deploy, super easy. Step one, I'm going to pick Block in this case. And remember, it's pretty much the same for File. There's a couple nuances with networking, but it's the same four steps. So here I'm going to select a, a version and then a region, in this case US East 2, and I'm going to click continue. I'm done with step one. Now I'm on to step two where I need to collect my, or connect my cloud account. I've actually already done that. I've got a previous video on that. It's super easy to do. I'm going to confirm the policies and roles, and I've set those up inside AWS in my account. And I'm going to quickly just verify encryption. If you have encryption, either customer managed or AWS managed, we can handle that with block. And you'll see that here in a second. So there's the policies and there's the role. All you do is copy and paste this one time into AWS and then verify. Uh, you let the wizard know to verify if you have encryption. The wizard will go off and check. I don't have it enabled, so we're good. Click continue. And now, step three, the deployment configuration. Now, here's just a little bit of storage config that you would expect from any enterprise-grade storage cluster, but it's very easy. So I'm going to give this deployment a name, something intelligent, something that actually, this is what the cluster is also going to be named, and you're going to see this as a prefix up in AWS when you do these deployments against all your artifacts, your EC2, et cetera. So you're going to see that. And then next step, I've got a couple of storage choices here for performance, either balanced or performance optimized. Next, I select the usable capacity and I select the IOPS. The wizard on the next screen is going to figure all this out and figure out how many instances we need, how much storage we need to bolt onto it, and then we're going to make a cluster out of all of those instances. Of course, networking, I'm going to actually create a new VPC. You can also use an existing VPC uh, if, as long as you stay within a few of the constructs that we have documented on our using your service guides. But I'm going to create a new VPC here. And that external subnet is going to require a slash 28. 
subnet and the internal is going to require pretty big one slash 22 but that's perfectly fine that's hands off that's only for internal storage traffic I'm going to give a uh, key pair name here an SS I call it hyphen SSH to make it real easy this is going to write off to the secrets manager in AWS I click continue and guess what step four I'm pretty much done and I'm ready to configure and confirm and deploy a storage or enterprise grade storage cluster into the cloud it's worth noting that we do get an eval 90 days for free that's awesome especially for POCs and you want to kick the tires and see how everything works and functionality maybe you want to stand this up and go through some more of my videos maybe some of the replication or the data mobility you can do all that but you got to get the storage cluster to play first and you can see how easy it is here and you can do it free for 90 days the next little box here you see my compute this is what the wizard came up with regarding the parameters I did on step three I need some C59 uh, or C5n NIAT X large instances uh, an additional instance and then some uh, EBS volumes that are bolted on there all to make this cluster this apex block cluster in the cloud I'm going to click confirm acceptance and then I'm going to deploy my deployment is now started so I can go over to the jobs and this is again exactly the same as what we had previously it's the same it's the exact same offer it's just inside now of apex AI ops which is very cool so you see everything queued there all of that is going to sequentially run it's going to go out and provision everything into AWS all the artifacts I can also go to manage multi-cloud storage and view jobs just a different way to get to the same thing I wanted to show both those options there so here you see there's the job that just got stood up with what we did here in the demo so this full deployment will take a couple hours now let's watch this I'm going to get into some details here in a second and we're going to watch this deploy so here we are in AWS let's open up our portal go to the correct region that we deploy to and we see that I have the installer stood up there and five instances remember those five uh, C5Ns there they are and the installer it's worth noting that that installer once everything has been installed the installer will terminate itself so it's only there for a short time just to do the installing we'll look at that here in a second of course all the networking security groups routes that's all done in an automated fashion for you here it's a beautiful way to go so let's take a look at this starting to get created here I see some subnets I see some route tables there's a little bit more that's going to come here in a second and you'll see that with the SCG but you can see how this internally has been routed and the correct security groups are tied to those routing tables now I see my SCG that's the secure connect gateway what is that Rob you ask that provides the outbound only telemetry to Apex AI Ops, the exact same place where we're deploying from. You're going to see that monitoring here in a second where we can provide the metrics about your enterprise grade storage system. So you don't necessarily have to monitor from AWS or the cloud. You just stay inside that single pane of glass called Apex AI Ops. Go back into the VPC here because I know something's getting created. And there's my SCG outbound monitoring connectivity. The, uh, the outbound internet gateway got connected and the routing tables are done correctly just for outbound traffic. I still have my inbound storage and there's my SCG stub subnet. Now this is gonna take a bit of time. It's gonna take about two hours to completely do all these steps with the PowerFlex deployment being the longest one that's perfectly fine. Now what I did is I actually for this demo I dropped a Windows jump host that I manually created not part of the automation and I put it into the same uh, uh, VPC and SCG subnet I put it there because at that point I can browse to my storage cluster using PowerFlex manager and you'll see that here in a second so I'm going to RDP I'm going to RDP well I've connected to the jump host RDP to it from my local machine here and now I'm going to SSH over to the installer because I just want to watch the bits flying by and watch the install go this is something you do not have to do I like to do it I've done it a lot with other demos it's just kind of fun to do and you see what's going on during the deployment there's nothing to interact with 
you just kind of watch the bits flying across the screen and I'll show that here in just a second. Of course, I went to Secrets Manager and I got my PEM file, so I have it right there in the correct directory. And I've already SSH'd in to the installer node. So once I'm SSH into the installer node, I can now tail the log, which is the bedrock log, and it's in this directory here. Let me kick that off. So there I'm going to paste that in. And now this is going to just write to the screen tailing out this log. What is this doing? Well, it's installing the PowerFlex management plane. This does take a while. It's a three node Kubernetes cluster. So it does take a little bit of time. I fast forwarded now and the deployment is all done. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, the installer will now simply terminate. Setting things up, notifying the user and then deployment complete. That was super easy. Now I can browse to all the cloud deployments. I have a couple there, one that I did previously and this new one we just finished. I see all the details here. There's, I can either go to PowerFlex Manager as a link and launch or I can go over here to the right to Actions. If I do that, I go to PowerFlex Manager that way, same link. Now this is interesting. I've got this 1683101 IP address. I need to connect to this IP address from the context of that SCG subnet. This is another reason I put that jump post there because I don't have a direct route to that subnet that I, or to that VPC and subnet that I just created. So I just put the jump post there to show you guys this demo. So I'm gonna paste that IP address. I'm on the jump house, a jump host now and I'm simply going to log in. First time connecting, every time with PowerFlex Manager, you need to change the password. There's the default username and password right there. I'm gonna type that in and it's gonna ask me, you need to change your password, Rob. So I'm gonna change it to something I remember. And boom, I'm in, there we go. So here is PowerFlex Manager running in AWS. I deployed with Apex Navigator and Apex AI Ops and I'm managing it from the cloud perspective. I'm on a jump host this time. You may be local to your environment because your VPC very well may be connected to that AWS environment. So let's browse what we can see here in PowerFlex Manager. There's my five storage nodes or my SDS nodes. That's exactly what I wanted to see for the balance config, perfect. There they are right there in AWS, one, two, three, four, five. You can see the jump that I'm actually on right now, and then my SCG at the top, which will also remain. And I can also monitor the infrastructure from the exact same pane of glass. Let's go back up to monitor infrastructure. And now I see two. I see my home lab, which is on-premises, and I see the Apex block uh, deployment that I just did here for the demo, all in the same place. That's very cool. On-premises and in the cloud all together. So from an a Apex AI Ops, layer, I can see health, inventory, capacity, performance. I can see all of that right here. Let's step through a few of those. There's my MDM resources, the primary, the secondary, and the tiebreaker, and their IP addresses. These are all the IPs from AWS. There's my five storage cloud infrastructure nodes. The capacity, of course, it's brand new. It's 100%. That's what I would expect. And I can go back to inventory and there's a few more places I can view here and see some different details. I can see the SDSs, different perspective. I can see my protection domain one right now. And there's my storage pool, exactly one. If I had some volumes, which I don't, I would also be able to see those here. So that is awesome. Everything in a single pane of glass, Apex AI Ops, Apex Navigator is now here for multi-cloud storage. I really appreciate everyone taking the time to view this. It's very cool. Last thing to know, we can filter between on-premises PowerFlex system and Apex Block for public cloud. Maybe I have a lot of installs of one or the other or both. I can filter. I can build my reports here and custom reporting for Apex AI Ops inside of 
uh, this tool also so I can do all kinds of activities and I have videos on this that you can take a look at. Again, thank you everyone for watching. I sure appreciate it.